Let's take a look at this little amplifier I bought. It's a Kenter MA170 two channel hi fi stereo amplifier. Well, they make a lot of these little amps. I'm not sure if this is class D. It doesn't never really said anywhere, but they usually are. But anyway, the interesting thing about this is it's seven dollars and eighty cents. That's it. <laughs> How good can it be? I don't know. I don't have high expectations. But it does look pretty nice. I mean, quality wise it's eh, it's all right, but I mean, it looks like a more expensive amplifier. Maybe like the $20 ones. It has um a power button here. Oh, you can see my shaved head there in the power button. And it has separate bass and treble controls. And the volume. And that ring around the volume control, which we'll see later when I demonstrate it, actually lights up. It's supposed to be like a color changing LED or something in there. And on the back you have your RCA inputs, your spring speaker terminals, and of course the power input jack. Everything seems fairly solid. Nothing rattles. Nothing feels loose. I mean, it feels like it's, uh, you know, it's going to work. I've never powered this thing up. I don't even know if it works yet. Here is the box it came in. And it came with this, not really a manual. Sorry about the flashing. This camera is annoying under some types of light. Here's the specifications. I won't read through everything, but you can just pause it and take a look. Output power is 18 watts per channel with 4 ohm loads, 10% distortion. Well, yeah, it's that high distortion they usually give to uh, things like this. A uh, number you see a lot with car stereo type stuff. But they're being realistic. Of course I will measure the power and see if it's for real or not. Harmonic distortion at 4 watts is pretty low. It doesn't give a frequency range or anything. But it is a pretty low number. Well, there's the other things on this paper. Nothing on the back. Well, let's hook it up and see if it works. Okay, I have it all hooked up. And my portable speakers there. And I'll use my power supply here, my Radio Shack regulated supply. Even under full load, it maintains a voltage over 14 volts. So, we'll see what happens. It'll be good for a power test. So, I'll power that up. And, uh, turn this down. First power up. There's kind of a big clunk when you turn it on but it has a little glowy ring color changing LED in there okay turn that off turn it on again and it didn't make the clunk that time okay so I have some music here people ask me what it is but Let's see, it's just stuff off of Jamendo. Right there's the title if you want to know it. I'm 
adjusting the base. That works pretty good. Treble. Well, it actually works. Sounds okay. You did hear a kind of a distortion in the bass, but that's just the synthesized bass in the music. That's, that's part of the music. There's really no distortion I can hear. It actually works. Bad news is, doesn't have enough gain. Have the volume all the way up, volume all the way up on this thing. And it doesn't get very loud at all. It's not because of power. It's because the gain is too low. The gain is set for line level devices. And these music players can only put out maximum of about uh, 500 millivolts at maximum possible signal before distorting. And uh, it's just too low for these. So it, 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 stupid things beeping, uh, but turn that off. Uh, yeah, so um, it really doesn't have enough gain to work well with these. I'm sure it will play loud, and we'll see when we do the power test of how much, uh, you know, actual watts this thing puts out. And I uh, even tear it open and see how it works. Okay, I have the non-inductive 4 ohm resistors connected. One to each channel because it is a stereo and I want to get both channels driven. B4 clipping, maximum output power. I was able to get uh, the thing to clip with my player, which is good. Because I do have a signal recorded at maximum level and here we go so you can see the, uh, the blue wave is the uh, spectrum analyzer and of course when we clip we get all those harmonics so we want to turn tune those out hmm I see something interesting A little bit of hang on, what's called hang on. See the little notch? That's called hang on. When a transistor saturates and uh, as it swings down, it hangs on a little bit to the rail. That's interesting because I think this thing is not class D at all. I think it is an analog amplifier. Let me get this thing adjusted so we get no distortion. And there's our waveform at 5.30 volts RMS. Okay, 5.3, we gotta square that, divided by 4. Seven watts. Pretty much seven watts, that's all you get of output power from this amplifier. And it does get warm. The chip must be mounted over here because it gets really warm on that side. If I didn't say so, it is aluminum case. And it's still running. 
So yeah, that that's interesting. Is this thing bridged? It's putting out more power than uh, just a push-pull single ended to ground would do. Hmm. Well, enough of this. Let's open the thing up and see what it is. Well, here it is. That's probably a uh, operational amplifier for the tone controls. I would probably uh, see and see if I can hack this thing and get more gain out of it. The chip is the TDA 7266SA, and it is fixed gain. There's no way to adjust the gain on that. It doesn't really look too bad. Not too much bodgery going on. Of course, it's got the no-name capacitors. It is a bridge amp. And uh, here's something interesting. Now let me first show you the uh, data sheet title. And I'll scroll down here and output peak current internally, internally limited at 2 amps. That means you really shouldn't be running this thing with 4 ohm loads at 12 volts. Absolutely shouldn't be doing it. It really should be used with 8 ohm loads minimum. That means you'll probably get... You know, I actually should test that. You still might get that 7 watts at 8 ohm loads because with the bridge amp running at 14 and a half volts or so I should be getting about 14 or 15 watts of output and I was obviously only getting seven we might have been running into its current limiting though it certainly wasn't distorting the waveform it was a non-inductive load though, so maybe that's it. I don't know. I don't see any power curves or graphs or anything. Here's the distortion. It's not bad, but it's not what I consider hi-fi because here's point one, and it does certainly go above that in certain parts of the audio spectrum whether you can actually hear that I I doubt it but um, still it has to be below the uh, 0.1% limit to be considered uh, hi-fi by me across the frequency and power band and this obviously doesn't do that they don't, of course, they don't have the power band graph, but... Welp! I guess the video has to continue. I want to see what this thing does with 8 ohm loads. I'm going to have to assemble this back. I had to... There's a little aluminum plate right here that really should have heat sink compound on it. And that screws together and pulls it against the uh, outside aluminum casing okay I have the thing put back together again I thought I was gonna have a hell of a time getting those screws in but managed to do it not too bad I have the 8 ohm loads connected now and I have the volume all the way up on both the music player and the amplifier and it's not clipping again it just doesn't have enough gain so I used the tone control in there I got it to clip so I got my number it's putting out 5.73 watts of clean power into 8 ohm loads both channels driven it 
and it's uh, it is warm but it's definitely definitely not as hot as it was with the forum loads but that's not really a surprise well what's my opinion of this amplifier well if you're going to use it with music players the gain is just too low if you turn the volume all the way up and all the way up on your player it might be good enough for just you know listening music you're not gonna drive it into clipping that's for sure because like I say with my music player with that signal as high as it can be I couldn't get it to clip unless I turned up the treble somewhat with a one kilohertz tone so yeah gain is a problem the amp in and, in and of itself is not too bad yeah it's uh, for seven dollars and eighty cents it works it sounds clean however they fumbled the specifications do not run the thing with four ohm loads you can probably do it if you just keep the voltage down to 9 volts any more than that you're exceeding the limits of the chip inside and it's the current limiting will protect it but it's eventually going to fail being pushed so hard so yeah I'll leave it up to you if this is an amp that you'd want to use or not well that's it for this review thanks for watching